Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and I have a question for you. I do. I always have questions for you. You know this, right? I'm always asking you questions. Why? Because challenge brings change, right? When we're challenged and we step up to the plate and take on the challenge, we are changed. Oh, that just came to me right now. I just was thinking that challenge to me brings change. And so I hope it does for you. So I'm going to challenge you right now. Number one, if you are watching this on YouTube, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that you know when the next episode is going to air. You never know when I'm going to drop these videos. You never know when I'm going to drop a golden nugget on you that you can take away and learn from and grow from. So you don't want to miss that. I really don't want you to miss out. So please subscribe. Also, if you like this video, if you learned even a single thing from this episode, be sure to like the video and maybe share it with someone else or just like the video. It's really okay. I really am just here to encourage you, to teach you, to train you, to be tough love on you so that you can grow. That's why we're here. Challenge is going to bring change and I am going to challenge you right now. Okay. My question is, are you an AP grad? Are you a graduate? Do you hold the highest honor for AP? Now, we're going to define that in just a moment. But first, I want to tell you this little story, right? Because, you know, we're constantly bombarded with endless choices, options, varieties, decisions are getting more challenging by the minute. Am I right? I mean, do you guys feel me over here for the one in the back? Hey, are you struggling to make decisions? Wendy, I'm always talking to you too because I know you're always listening and walking your dog. So right now, I'm asking you, are decisions getting harder? See, I use people's names when I know them because I know people are listening and they tell me they listen to every episode. And so if you reach out to me, send me a comment, leave a feedback for this podcast, for this video, for wherever it is you're listening or watching, feedback is super important. And so Wendy has left me feedback, so I'm always talking to her on the podcast as well. It's just one person I know for sure that listens to this show, walking her dog um, every Every single time we air an episode and she is just listening. So Wendy, hi, I hope you're listening today. Um, are decisions getting harder for you? Do you struggle to make decisions? Do you worry about past decisions that you've made and regret and things like that? Because I really feel like decisions are getting a lot harder. Why? Because we're exposed to more technology. We're exposed to more options than we ever had. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I was a kid, dinner was dinner. Like you got what was served to you or you got what was there and prepared for you. And that's all you got to choose from. We didn't have a choice. It was like tonight we're having really overcooked um, pork chops, which I still do not eat pork chops to this day. Y'all no offense to my um, dad who just overcooked every single piece of meat because he was so worried about E. coli and everything else that literally like we ate hockey pucks for dinner all the time. Um, no love lost there. Just learned my lesson, learned how to properly cook meat in my adulthood. So it didn't have to taste like you know, cardboard and, um, you know, sawdust and things like that. So, but when I was a kid, we didn't have a choice. We didn't get a choice for dinner. It was, this is what I made. This is what I'm cooking. And eventually when we got like old enough to make ourselves around the kitchen, like 12 or 13 or something, my dad was like, if you don't like what I made, make yourself something else, have a peanut butter and jelly, have a grilled cheese, have a bowl of cereal, but I'm not cooking more than one meal. I'm not cooking all this stuff. So we didn't have a lot of options, but today I feel like there's so many more options, so many more decisions that we have to make in our business. Just another example here is a local restaurant that just opened. And look, I love Mexican food, y'all. And every single time there's a Mexican place that opens up, you know I'm all about the tacos, right? You guys, do you want to know a way to my heart? Do you want to like smooge me over and like really like get to my heart? Tacos. Talk about the Chiefs, talk about football, talk about the tacos. Like I'm in, I'm here for the tacos, just so you know. And yeah, my podcast editors, they want to pull out the golden nuggets for the day. That was it. It was the tacos. It was, you want to know how to get to know Kristen and now to get on her good side, literally buy me tacos. <laughs> Okay, y'all, all jokes aside, honest to goodness, uh, the new restaurant opened up around here and I'm telling you what, I love Mexican food. I love the tacos. And so my husband went and I went to this new place and literally the menu was pages and pages long. Now, I've been to many, many Mexican restaurants and there's only so many ways that they can make stuff, right? So like a taco is kind of a taco. You read the ingredients, whatever else. But like when we go to a new place, we approach until, with excitement and then we see the menu and then we're like, oh my gosh, there's so many pages. It's double-sided. I can't even like count all the things on the list. How many ways can we make tacos, y'all? 
information overload causes us stress. Everything looked amazing on this menu. It was going to be tough to choose. But with so much variety and so much overwhelm with looking at pages and pages and pages of options, I overanalyzed. I overthought. Y'all, I just told you. What do I love? Tacos, right? So everything in my mind was like, well, what if I order something and I don't like it? What if their beef is bland? What if it has, what if it's too spicy? What if it's too greasy? What if it has green olives? Blah. Yuck. The overwhelming menu ended up making me choose something super boring and predictable because I didn't know what else to do. Have you ever been faced with any of these types of decisions where you end up just going back to what you've always done, even though it's not what you really want, because the choices are so many, there's so many choices, you just don't know what to do. New restaurants are not the only thing bombarding us with endless options. I mean, honestly, it's way easier for me to go to a restaurant or a bar, like one of our places we play cornhole, it's called One Eye Jacks, and we love it because it has so many cool things. They have a one-page laminated menu. On one side, it's, it's like, it's bar food, but it's amazing bar food. They have the best tacos, by the way, literally. The, the chicken sriracha tacos, if you're ever in my neck of the woods, or if you're from Michigan, or you're from the area, go to One Eye Jacks, play some cornhole, and get the chicken sriracha tacos because they're fantastic. Okay, just saying that was a little shameless plug for my friends over at One Eye Jacks. Um, but honestly, honestly, and listen, I love their menu because it's literally one page. It's like one page over here. You get to have wings, boneless or regular. You have four or five sauces to choose from. There's a couple of salads, a couple of burgers, and a partridge in a pear tree and some tacos. <laughs> like it's not hard to make a decision when you literally have some limited options. Let's just be real about that. But as entrepreneurs, we face countless decisions on a daily basis. There's always something new that we're being exposed to. There's always a new platform, a new way to sell, a new, a new uh, repricer tool, a new keyword. And now we have AI and chat G GDP and, you know, we're, we're making stuff on laser printers and like, I mean, 3D laser printers, all kinds of options for us to continue to innovate, to continue to grow, continue to change. But my question to all of us is, how do we know if we're making all the right decisions when all of these options are coming at us so fast and so frequently? This new fill in the blank, this new tool, software, conference, program, business model, YouTube video sounds amazing and I'm scared I'm going to miss the opportunity. Y'all, can we just take a breath for a second? Just take a breath for a second. And just be aware if you if you struggle, if you're relating here, just take a moment to breathe and be like, yes, yes, I relate. But we relate in a, a stressful, negative way, right? We're not just like, heck yeah, I totally relate. That's awesome. No, we relate because it's a struggle and we're driving the struggle bus when it comes to all of these decisions that we have to make. So the question is, how do we stop ruminating over the decisions and actually make some that are going to make an impact, impact on our business? Because y'all, this is a business podcast, right? So if we want to make an impact on our bottom line. That's why we're in business, right? So I have to ask you this. Are you an AP graduate? You know who you are and you know what AP is, right? You have a degree in AP, some of us. Overthinking, analysis paralysis graduate. That's what AP is. Are you an AP graduate? An analysis paralysis graduate. You chase all the shiny objects. Are you overanalyzing? Are you overthinking on a regular basis? I know the struggle is real. We get stuck in this research mode, hello forever. Analysis paralysis. Well, for my AP grads, <laughs> I'm just using this as a positive, right? Because we all struggle with this. And most of you as Amazon sellers and bundlers, specifically bundlers, are going to struggle with AP at some point. AP. We're just calling you, you're, you, you know, I, I'm going to make t-shirts. I swear this, like I'm an AP graduate and people are going to be like, AP, what is that? And we're like, you're not in the club. You don't know. You don't know. And instead of trying to make this such a negative, shameful guilt thing, which we're not going to do. Why? Because we're naturally hardwired to question things, to wonder, to worry, to be um, fear averse, to, to be risk averse. You know, we don't want to take chances. We, we think that we're protecting ourselves from some sort of imminent harm when we overanalyze. That's actually what we're doing. 
we have this false sense of protection that we're saying, saying oh no i gotta keep thinking about this and keep thinking about this because what if because what if i make the wrong choice what if i make want to lose money what if i get suspended what if my third tire on the back of my car falls off and rolls down the road like honestly we can get stuck in ap <clears throat> forever in the Amazon world, there are so many things that we can overthink. So many things. There are so many Facebook groups and YouTube channels and blogs and books and tools and co courses all shoved at you all at the same time. And it is really, really hard to stay focused, is it not? Y'all, I'm gonna tell you a little, another little story because I'm with you here. See, when you hear me in this microphone, when you see me on this video and you think that that you're all alone or that I'm talking at you, y'all, I am side by side. I have my arm linked on this side with somebody, arm linked on this side. I'm like, we're doing this together, right? Because it's really hard for me to stay focused too. You know, guys, this, by this morning, I was supposed to have three or four different things done on my list. I had to go to my YouTube channel to, um, you know, answer some comments and things like that. And then guess what I saw? I said, oh, there's this live video going on with some friends in the space and I wanna join their live video. So I spent an hour hanging out with them. Now, is that bad time spent? Absolutely not. It's super valuable to spend time like that. But what is the thing I didn't get done because I did that, because I didn't stay focused, because I was chasing a shiny object. Even if the shiny object is awesome and valuable, is it on your priority list today? Because if you replace something that's on your list today, it's gonna be there for you tomorrow. It's gonna be there for you tomorrow. So that hour that I spent on YouTube, on a live commenting and hanging out with some cool people was fun and, and valuable. And I learned a couple of like golden nuggets, but what was I doing? What, what was I putting off that I wasn't doing at that time? Cause that's not what I was supposed to be doing. I was distracted by a shiny object. I saw this live video going on and I thought, oh my gosh, they're live. Like I have a chance to chat and ask questions. I can't miss this. I had some FOMO and instantly and I made the choice to jump on and hang out for a bit. Wasn't a bad choice, but now I have a choice to be like, wow, I'm supposed to record two podcasts today. And now I'm only going to get one of those done because I spent another hour doing this. I want to talk about why. I feel the need for FOMO or where we all feel like that and the reason and, and what we can do to fix it. What we can do to fix it. Well, overthinking may be built into your personality and, and analysis paralysis and being distracted and all the different shiny objects. It might be part of just your natural personality and that's okay. I'm not trying to change your personality, but if we're not deriving benefits from our analysis paralysis, then we're going to overthink ourselves to death. We're not going to take any action. We're going to be in the same place in the same chair that we were a year ago, not making any progress because analysis paralysis will keep you busy, but it won't keep you moving in the right direction. It's really hard to stay focused, but when it comes to the tools for your business, decisions are hard. Decisions are hard. There's not, there's no shortage of products and services and courses to buy. Am I right? I mean, even for me, even as a business owner, there are things bombarded. I mean, if I opened my Instagram right now, y'all would see like 10 or 15 different ads of somebody trying to tell me how to one up my business. I get it. It's really noisy out there and there's so many distractions. There's no shortage of services or products to buy to grow your business. So which ones do you actually need? How do we get make start making decisions? That's the biggest thing about analysis paralysis. That is the the, the solution, that's really the solution. The solution to analysis paralysis, to overthinking, to being an AP graduate is to actually make a decision and take action on something. Even if it's not the best decision, even if you're a perfectionist and you're trying to get the most perfect decision, you have several options and you're just weighing them down more, weighing them out more. The only antidote to this is to actually take action towards the thing that you want. So before we, so making, it's making a decision. Making a decision is the antidote to your AP graduate. You wanna solve, you wanna become an expert? Make decisions and learn from them. That's all you can do, make decisions. Before you can make a good decision about the products or services that you need or don't need, 
you need to define a few things. So this is not just a lesson in how to stop overanalyzing and overthinking. And I'm not saying you're going to stop that forever. It's going to be part of you. You're not going to just quit. It's not like cold turkey quitting smoking or something like that, where you're just like, I'm dropping it all. I'm never overthinking again. Let's just be real. That's not happening. It's going to take a while to retrain your brain and it has takes active intention to do so. Today, listening to this episode is part of your active intent to stop overanalyzing and overthinking and instead to move forward to help you get some bullet points to help make a good decision. So if you're stuck in analysis paralysis, you're like, oh, I don't know if I should go this way or this way or this way, this way. Having a couple of these things in mind, these these um, you need to determine a few things first will help you make faster, easier, more efficient, and the best decisions for your issue, okay? Number one, your goal. If you're trying to choose the right products and services to support and grow your business, there's plenty. I could give you a list here. You know, I have affiliates and I can say, okay, go to Helium 10, go to Merchant Words, go to AMZ Scout, go to Jungle Scout, go to... um inventory lab go to scan power like there's so many different services whatever but you want to ask yourself this question first instead of something coming at you and then making a decision about it make your decisions ahead of time plan your decisions plan that the shiny objects are going to come and have these things defined what will i be able to accomplish what do i want to accomplish by adding this tool what problem are you trying to solve for yourself so here's an example. Say that you are in a one bedroom, or no, you're in a studio apartment, New York, somewhere that where, where there's, you know, just studio apartments and you want to start an Amazon business and you've heard you have to have all this inventory and, you know, you have to do all this stuff like, well, how on earth are you going to do that? You don't have the space for that. But what you're saying is, oh, but I also heard there's prep centers, right? So I don't have to touch inventory to have an inventory based business. Wait, first of all, anyone that didn't catch that, did you know that? You can use a third party shipping and receiving company to prep and pack your shipments to Amazon so that you never have to touch any inventory that you're actually selling in your store. It's not drop shipping. It's called third party fulfillment. It's called third party prep, ship and fulfillment. And you can be hands off on an inventory based business, even if you just have a Shopify store, even if you have an Etsy store, even if you have an Amazon or eBay store, there's a third party fulfillment at any of these places. My favorite is myprepcenter.com. Nathan and Bridget and Noah over there will take really good care of you, whether you're doing arbitrage, online, private label, wholesale. You don't have to ship any of your inventory. So the first thing that you need to decide if you hear, like I just told you about the prep center, right? So now you're probably in your mind. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. I'm laughing at myself because it takes one to know one, right? So I'm thinking to yourself, oh, do I need a prep center? Do I have a prep center? I don't have one. What if I need it? What if I'm missing out on something? How do, you know, your mind is going a million miles a minute now because I just told you if for, for the first time, maybe for some people, they've never heard of a prep center. They didn't realize that they could sell on Amazon, eBay, Walmart, any of these other places and actually ship your products all into a prep center, which then they prepare and ship them out to either a Amazon um, fulfillment centers or your actual customer. Third party fulfillment means you could have a Shopify store full of candles. And when someone orders from you, all you have to do is send an email or better yet, pay an assistant to send an email to your third party fulfillment saying we have an order for one, you know, but first coffee candle, which is my favorite one by Celestial Sense, by the way. Um, I know shameless plugs, right? I'd always talk about things that I love you guys. And I love candles and I love celestial sense and the uh, run. Oh, anyway, not going through. Yeah. If it's for hurting for the first time, what problem are you solving for yourself? What do you want to accomplish with this? And I say fill in the blank resource tool, uh, software research, um, company, whatever it is. What problem are you trying to solve? So first things first to make any decision, what do I want to accomplish by adding this tool or software or blog or video or training or anything else? What problem for yourself are you trying to solve? So if you don't want to ship and pack all of your stuff for customers or for Amazon fulfillment, you're trying to solve that problem with a prep center. So you want to research and verify the prep centers, ask them what they do, what their costs are, and figure that out. So that is really your goal. What is the main problem you want to solve in your business right now? 
I want you to like write that on a sticky note and literally put it on your computer, put it on your ring light, put it on your printer, put it on something that you can see visually every single time you're looking at your computer, your laptop, your phone, wherever it is. Put that there somewhere. What is the main problem you want to solve in your business? Do you want to become more efficient? Do you want to reduce costs? Do you want automation? Do you want faster, more accurate research? Bookkeeping, accounting, prep center, keyword product research, listing builders, listing optimization. Y'all, the, the, the tools are endless. What is the main problem that you have that you want to solve right now in your business? Before you get shiny object syndrome and someone always telling you what to buy and where to buy and how to buy and all these different things, ask yourself that question first. You build your own priority list. What is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? And then what are the tools necessary to do that? I mean, my husband's a carpenter. So I think a lot in tools. My dad was a woodworker. My husband's a carpenter. Like we're surrounded by tools all the time. Even like on the kitchen counter, I guarantee you right now there's probably a tool somewhere. I don't know. Tools are everywhere. But if I wanted to build something, then I have to first decide what I want to build. What kind of functionality does it need? Building the blueprint first. What, how do I need it to function? What do I want it to look like? What is the size and shape of this thing? Now that's very practical building something, but you're building a business. So what do you want that to look like? How efficiently do you want to run it so things are more automated? Are you on a schedule? Do you have a schedule of ways? What is your goal? What your problem do you want to solve? So if you're in the middle of product research and you realize that it's going really slow and you're not doing a really good job of it, what tool will make you more efficient? Is it a simple checklist next to you to say, okay, if I check all the boxes, the answer is yes and I can move on. Do you know we have that in our Amazon Files Hub? If you're a Wholesale Bundle student and you join the Hub, there are so many tools and resources in there. See here, I'm giving you another option for a tool. Guess what? You don't have to have them. What you do have to have is a goal for your business. It's not just the day-to-day -day working stuff out. It's what am I working towards? What are you working towards? What do you want your business to look like at the end of this year? What kind of finances do you want to bring in? What kind of staff do you want to hire? What do you want to take off of your plate? How do you want to enjoy your life more? And how can your business support that? That's the real question. And see, we're so scared. We get so stuck in analysis paralysis, AP. I say that because I always stumble over the words. We get stuck in the AP because we're so worried about not getting the result that we don't even take the action. That's so backwards. Okay, back to picking research tools and, and not just research tools, tools and resources for your business. The three things. You need to know what is the main problem you want to solve in your business and what tool or resource is going to help you get there the fastest. And then weigh your budget. Both time and money has a budget. When I say budget, everyone thinks money. But no one thinks about spending their time the way they spend money, which we all should. That's the soapbox that I'm on right now. Your time's actually more valuable than money. Ask anyone who was recently diagnosed with a terminal illness. What's more important, time or money? I know that's real and realistic. And that's something we have to just sit with for a second. We have a budget of both time and money. How much am I willing to spend to accomplish my goal? Ask yourself these questions. Write them down right now. Your budget. How much time am I willing to spend to accomplish my goal? Remember, the goal was first. So if you skip that part, go back. What is your goal? What is your goal for the tool? If you don't want to make a year goal, first of all, why not? Let's have a conversation. Because why are you working? Why do you have a business if you don't have goals? What are you trying to accomplish? And if you don't know, there's no shame. You don't, if you're sitting here right now and you're listening to these words and you say, oh my gosh, I don't have a goal. I don't really know what my goal is. That's okay. It's okay up until this moment. It's okay until you're challenged to think differently. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm challenging you, if you don't have a goal, to stop everything and sit with yourself. 
for a moment for 15 minute hustle. I know you have 15 minutes. Might, it might not be right this second, but I know that you can put 15 minutes on your calendar. You can set a timer and you can ask yourself these questions and then just write down or record whatever you want to do, whatever your medium is of kind of getting thoughts out of your head. I'm an outward processor. I like to talk. Um, so sometimes I just turn the camera on and talk to it. And it's not as there's videos that none of you have ever seen me talking to myself just like this. <laughs> so that helps me process all the things that are in my head as well. But ask yourself, what am I doing here? What do I, I have this business? Why? Why do I want it? What is it doing for me? What benefit am I deriving from this business? And what future benefit do I want to continue deriving from this business? And then ask yourself, how much time and how much money am I willing to spend to accomplish my goal? What are your assets? What do you have? Do you have some cash to invest? Do you need credit? Do you need a loan? Like, what do you need? And does it make sense for you right now? Does adding a tool or a resource or a training or a mastermind group or a workshop, does it make sense for your business and your goals right now? Well, if you don't have those, that's step one. What do you want? Now, this isn't a test question that you can fail. If you don't know what you want, it's time to hit pause. Because if you don't know what you want, it's almost like you're wandering around without a map. You're going to different places. Maybe you're accomplishing some things. Maybe you're getting some joy and excitement out of some of it. But you're kind of wandering around, just not quite knowing exactly where you want to go. Not exactly what you want to accomplish. You think you're in the right place, but you're not really sure. Think about those things and then ask yourself, what am I willing to spend time and money on my goal? What makes sense for my business right now? And then do I have the time to implement this tool? So if you're saying, yes, I want to do wholesale bundles and I want to add that to my Amazon business model in 2023. First of all, I hope that's a goal for some of you because wholesale bundles is are the best. Like, I just love <clears throat> the creativity of it. I love the fact that I don't have competitors. I love the fact that I can put different things in there without worrying about branding issues or G10 exemption issues or IP claims. I'm just, that's what I love about creating bundles and, and doing all that. So say that's one of your goals. How do you accomplish that goal? What makes sense for your business right now if you want to add bundles? Well, you need to learn how to do them. So training is part of that. You need to understand the concepts. You need to buy custom packaging and have a, a get moving on brand registry. Does that make sense for your business right now? What kind of business model do you have and where would you like to steer your ship? You're the captain of the ship. You get to decide which direction it goes or if you're just anchored and you're staying in one place. So once you decide where you're going, you decide what you need in order to get there. Say you want to add bundles to your business model. Remember I said add. I didn't say replace. I said add. You can add bundles. You can add one bundle at a time to your current business model. If you're currently doing RA, great. Add a bundle. And as you learn how to do bundles, add another bundle. As you learn how to do a private label, add a private label. There, you're not pigeonholed into one thing. Right? We're all about multiple income streams and multiple. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So add one bundle. What do you need to do to get there? You need some training. And you also need time and money to invest. Not a ton, but some. How are you going to budget that? Then ask yourself that. Do you have time to implement the tool that you're about to invest in? It doesn't matter which one. You want to sit here for me to tell you Helium 10 is better or Merchant Words is better or um, Jungle Scout versus AMZ Scout or, you know, all this different stuff. That doesn't actually matter. In the end, these are the questions that matter. What is your goal? What are you trying to accomplish? What do you want the tools to do for you? Where do you want to go in your business? Do you have time and money to implement this new tool or this new strategy? That is the biggest question. If you sign up for Merchant Words, do you have time to implement what you are learning? The great thing about Merchant Words, which I love, mommyincome.com slash Merchant Words. Um, what I love about Merchant Words is that it really doesn't have a learning curve. It's like you go in there, you click classic search and you type in a word and it gives you stuff and it's really plain English. You can understand it. 
You don't have to learn how to use merchant words. I mean, there's some pieces that you will, but like most of it's very intuitive. It's like you type in, you know, if I type in, you know, cornhole bags <laughs> into merchant words, it's very self-explanatory what the numbers are. Once you understand what column, it's like, oh, this column means this is searched this many times per month. It's very simplistic. Do you have the time to implement the tool? That might say, that might help you make your decision. The time that you have to put in means you might want a more simplistic tool that will get the job done because you don't have a lot of time to put into learning the tool first. What's your available budget for tools, for education, for software, for resources, for programs? Business is always ongoing. So those are the things that you need to ask yourself. Now, when you're making a decision about some of these things, you need to ask yourself these questions too. What features are the most important to you within a program, service, or tool? Before you take another class, before you talk to another mentor, before you watch another YouTube video even, ask yourself these questions. What features are most important to me within a program or service or tool? Well, if English is your second language, maybe your translation or transcripts or closed captioning are really important for you within a program. Maybe that's one of the features that you absolutely need because, or maybe you're hearing impaired or visually impaired. What features are most important to you within a program, a tool, or a service? I'm very visual. I need to, the user interface to look very appealing or I don't want it. I like color. I like charts. I like something that's very, very easy to comprehend, visually speaking. I like percentages. I like something that's very easy to understand at a glance. So that's something that's important to me. What tools are available that solve your problem and fit your budget? So if you want a keyword research tool, like you can check our resources page too, by the way, we have all these suggestions on there. If you want to use any of our resources, mommyincome.com forward slash resources. It's always mommyincome.com slash something. So this is resources. You can check out the resources we recommend there. I've tried most of them, if not all of them, and have decided on the ones that are best for me. But those features might not be for you, and that's okay. What tools are available that fit your that solve your problem and fit your budget? So if your budget's only $50 a month, then this one over here might have a lot of tools and bells and whistles, but this one over here is simplistic and fits your budget. Whatever the case may be, it still has to fit your budget and solve your problem. And what time commitment do you have set aside to learn and implement the new tool? Y'all, if you want to add wholesale bundles, you're going to have to learn the process. Not going to lie and say that it's going to be overnight. It's a lot of training. But it's also a million dollar strategy. So what are you willing to do? Do you know that most people are willing to go to college for four years? and spend hundreds of thousands of dollars either in scholarship or their own pocket or their parents' money or student loans, and they get out of college and get jobs that are starting at 50 or 60,000 a year. How long will it take you to make a million dollars doing that? They invested in their education that eventually pays dividends. What are you willing to invest that's going to give you a future benefit? Are you willing to set aside 50 hours in the next year to learn a strategy that can earn you more than six figures a year? Are you willing to spend the time and the money on that? Think about the benefit that you get for the cost and time that you're invested in. Your return on investment. Your return on investment of a course. Your return on investment of a tool. Truth be told, you don't need all the things. But you do need some. I mean, honestly, have you ever purchased something that you were afraid to miss out on, but then you actually never took the time to learn it? You were just too afraid to miss out that you had to get it now. If you have one of these tools or apps or software programs, maybe that's where you need to start. Or analyze with a question. Make time to learn and implement it. If it was important to you then, think about it. And if it wasn't, you say, oh, I just bought that because I had FOMO and it was just like a kind of buyer's remorse type thing. I don't really need it or want it. I was just scared to miss out. But honestly, if you bought a tool and you're not using it and you're not utilizing the resources every day that goes by that you don't use that tool, 
that you've invested in, you're wasting money. It's true. It's not easy to hear, but it's true. You don't. You don't need more information. Let me say that louder for the people in the back that didn't hear me. You don't need more information. You need the right information. And then you need to take action. You have all the information. You just need to do the thing, whatever the thing is. Now, the last thing is really matching up the products and tools and services and education that you need that's going to fit your business. It's going to fit your needs and your budget, your time and your money budget. Remember that tools, products, and services are not generally permanent. Some tools might not be a good fit for you and you can cancel them if they don't work for you. Some of the tools didn't work for you because, ugh, hate to say it, but I have to. Some things didn't work for you because you didn't do the work. You didn't do the work. Maybe you watched some training and you're like, oh, I kind of understand this concept, but you didn't actually do anything with it. You didn't implement the strategies. You didn't put them into practice. You didn't give it time and effort. They didn't work for you because you didn't work for it. That's hard. I know that's hard to hear. I've done it a million times. Some tools that you will use right now, some resources, will work for you now, but they won't, won't work down the road. Some things are too big for you right now, but will be a perfect fit later. This does not mean that you should invest in everything and every amazing deal right now. Guess what? Merchant Words, Helium 10, Jungle Scout, Inventory Lab, FreshBooks versus QuickBooks even. These are all ab around and they've been around and they're going to be around. It's not scarce. So if you don't implement them right now, or don't uh, invest in them right now, it's okay. They'll still be there when you're ready. Don't shame yourself into thinking you have to be ready for every tool right now. You don't have to buy them all. Research the best features and benefits that will work best for you and then make a decision. You know how to make up a decision? Create a deadline. We can all get stuck in AP. We can get stuck in research mode. And we're waiting for the best information. I just need to research a little bit more. No, create yourself a deadline. Once you know you've defined what you want and need and where you want to go, set yourself a deadline. Say between now and next Friday, I'm going to make a decision about which keyword research tool I want to use. In the meantime, you can watch tutorial videos. You can do some research, maybe join some of their Facebook groups to kind of see what people are talking about. Watch tutorials, whatever it is, and then make your decision on that day. Say, I'm going to pick either A or B. Put a deadline on it. If you don't put a deadline on it, it just fizzles through the air. It's still there. It's still hanging over you. Give yourself time afterwards to get familiar with the tools and resources that you need. Schedule an education day and dive in. Learn a few new things and practice them. Learn a few new things and practice them. So for all my AP graduates out there, you're moving on. You don't get a prize for graduating. For, from analysis paralysis. I'm gonna graduate you out of that. That's what we're doing. We're graduating you out. You've earned a degree. You're all done. <laughs> you earned your degree in analysis paralysis. You're all done now. It's time to move on. We're gonna move on to decision-making. Tools, software, services, mentorship, coaching, education, videos, podcasts. Remember the three things. Remember them. What is your goal? Overall goal. What do you want to accomplish in your business? What do you want to accomplish by adding another tool? And what is your time and money budget for implementing the new tool? What is it going to do for you? What benefit will it bring? What benefit are you looking for? Analyze. Make your decisions like that. Make your decisions for dinner like that. What is your goal? My goal is to eat tacos. <laughs> How is this going to benefit me? Well, it nourishes my body, gives me food and fuel for energy, some nutrients, some 
questionable nutrients. <laughs> that might be the margarita. <laughs> um, but honestly, what is your goal? What do you want to accomplish? What is your time and money budget? My time budget is, I don't know, an hour for dinner and, you know, 20 bucks or so, right? Whatever it is. You know, some some of us have a budget for, I don't know, what's the new place I love is the Snap Taco. But like some days, the Taco Bell's the budget, right? Let's be real. It's okay. It doesn't have to be hard. What's the goal? What do you want to accomplish? Where? How are you going to get there? And what's your time and money budget? Y'all, I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing, listening to any other podcast. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're graduating out of analysis paralysis. You're officially a graduate. You went through the school, you bought the t-shirt, you got the thing, you're done now. It's time to make decisions. I'm proud of you. You probably already made a decision in this hour that we've been together. Keep making decisions. Keep being proud of yourself. Keep learning from them, even if they're the wrong ones or the bad ones. Did you die? Did you actually die? I say that in my book a lot. Did you die? No, you didn't. It might have hurt. It might have had some consequence or result that you didn't want. But what did you learn? What did you learn? What did we learn? You learn from that and you move on. So you have graduated from AP, y'all. It's time to move on into decision making. I gave you the tools and the resources to help you make decisions. Now go make some decisions. We'll see you guys same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.